Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. A very happy new year to you. I don't know if it's still acceptable to say happy new year on the 14th of January, but I'm rolling with it. If you don't know me, hello, my name is Rhiannon. I make videos. Make sure to subscribe so you get all the updates from my channel. Give this video a like at the end if you liked it and maybe even a comment if you're feeling extra. As the title suggests, we are going to be looking at my winter favourites, of which I have many. It's really weird because I'm actually not drinking any tea and I feel like something is missing. But, you know when you've got Fenty lip gloss on and you just don't want to ruin the sauce, essentially. Like, this shit is expensive, I need to keep it on for as long as possible. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. The first thing I have to talk to you guys about is this book. <sighs> okay, I'm really passionate about everything in this video, so forgive me if I come across as like, really obsessed. The Girl With All The Gifts by M.R. Carey. Now, I know I'm a little bit late to the party. I'm pretty sure this came out like three years ago. 2014, six years ago. Okay, really late to the party. There was a film made a couple of years ago, I believe in 2016. I haven't watched it. I'm not sure if I want to because I'm just so enamored by the way this book was written. If you don't know what it's about, it's about a little girl called Melanie. She is essentially living in a post-apocalyptic UK. So you find out more about what's happened to the world as you read on. There is an infectious disease that has turned the majority of the population into zombies, essentially. And there are people that haven't been affected and are trying to survive. Some people are working on a cure, but as you can imagine, the world is pretty bleak. Melanie is being kept in this sort of concentration camp type environment. She is apparently dangerous, but you don't know why at the beginning and you have to read on to find out. A lot of shit goes down. Melanie is the protagonist, however, there are three other major characters who feature in the book. And one thing that I was particularly impressed with was the way that the author just managed to seamlessly slide into the persona of each character and really describe what was happening but through their eyes like it was very interchangeable very very um good craftsmanship there i feel like there are a lot of layers to the characters as well they've all got stories they've all got history whether you like them or not you do feel yourself aligning with them in one way or another it's really gripping like from the moment i started it i just couldn't seem to put it down, I had to pace myself. But towards the end it got very difficult. So I ended up reading the last, well maybe the second half of the book in a very short amount of time. I mean these kinds of books tend to be quite gripping anyway because you know it's dystopian, it's about the end of the world, it's about surviving, there's a lot of drama. I think also because it focuses on this little girl and the way she is seeing everything go down is very very poignant. A lot of good themes to explore in here. There are quite a lot of book club questions at the end, but I don't have anyone to discuss the questions with. So if you've read the book, let me know. We can talk about it. I've turned to lots of online forums to see what people had to say. It's one of those books where you can just discuss the themes really in depth once you've finished. Along the way as well, but like, that the ending is particularly interesting and perhaps controversial. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say about it. If you haven't read it, give it a read because it's flipping amazing. Moving on swiftly, the next thing I have to talk about is a TV series that is on BBC iPlayer. It's called Guilt. It is set in Scotland. There are four episodes, I believe, each an hour long which was really good for me because I've got a short attention span and you know I really want to watch more things but I just feel so overwhelmed and intimidated by how many episodes some of these series have like it's absolutely ridiculous I think I fare better with like programs that have episodes of 20 to 30 minutes and not that many seasons because then it's manageable but like I just don't have time to be sitting there anyway I digress this program is really really good my dad told me about it I don't know if many people have been watching it but it's it's like a dark comedy so essentially it's about two brothers they accidentally hit a man whilst driving and kill him and then they try to cover up the murder 
but obviously as you would expect things don't exactly go according to plan a lot of other characters are introduced and there's so many little twists and turns like it's really interesting to sort of analyze the behavior of the two brothers because they're very different like i said it's a dark comedy so it it does have a lot of humor in it <laughs> and um like the book that i just talked about is quite gripping you want to find out what's going to happen next because things don't exactly go as you think they're going to go so that's all i'm going to say about that okay album you might, unless you've been living under a rock, have heard of the new Stormzy album. Guys, I think we just need to take a moment of silence for how amazing this album is. <laughs> I'm one of those people, I've always liked Stormzy, like I wouldn't say I'm a hardcore Stormzy fan, however I do sort of dip in and out of his music when it comes on I recognise the bangers, but this album sort of changed my perspective, actually that's a lie. I listened to his previous album and I was impressed but I feel like this one was even more amazing. Obviously when he came out with Vossi Bop, everyone was chatting about that, I love that song. This album has just sort of blown up Vossi Bop style. I could sit here and talk about it for a long time and like go through every song but I'm not going to do that because this is not an album review video. I'll just run through a couple of things that I wanted to say. I feel like there is a really good mixture of music in this album. Obviously Stormzy is a rapper so he really goes to town with all his skills. Like there were so many bars that I listened to and I was like... I just, you know, it makes me, it's so inspirational because I love lyrics, I love poetry, I tried to dabble in some rap, spoken word, etc, etc. So for me this was really inspiring, I'm just like wow, how does he think of these things, you know? How is it possible for someone to have so much lyrical talent? In songs like the two former tracks, Big Michael, Audacity, also you can just feel how passionate he is, like he really throws his passion into everything. Wiley Flow, that song that song is just... He's got a few sort of more mellow tracks in there as well. He does include singing, he does bring in some other artists such as her, Ed Sheeran, Burner Boy, and then we've also got Heady One who is also really talented, can I just say. I am partial to the song Rainfall. I know it's probably not the strongest song of the album, but I just love the chorus. Like, <laughs> let the rain fall on my enemies. Yeah, fall on my enemies. I really like the song Superheroes, that's really inspirational. Lessons is like a kind of more mellow tune about him essentially admitting his wrongs. Yeah, it's just an all round really impressive album. Also, I feel like you really get a sense of the pressure that comes with being such a significant figure in British music culture today. Like that really comes through in the album. He knows how good he is, but he also he also knows the struggle. He goes into depth about mental health, he mentions his faith. I feel like there's a lot of layers to it. Go listen to it if you haven't listened to it. I don't know why you haven't listened to it if you haven't listened to it. How many more times can I say listen to it? Interlude. Bum ba -dum, bum ba -ba -dum. Bum ba -dum, bum ba -ba -dum. I realised that I desperately needed tea. Can we just talk about this mug? Um, my mum got this and three other mugs in a set for Christmas. It's by a brand called Royal Dalton. Dalton? Yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. This could be part of the video. Like, this could be my, my favorite mug of the moment. Let's carry on. The artist that I've been loving recently is Gold Link. I haven't been listening to this guy for very long, but someone I know, I can't remember who it was, mentioned him to me. Oh yeah, it was someone at my old workplace. Shout out to you, Jermaine, if you're watching. Gold Link has quickly become one of my new favorite artists. So his latest album is one that I've been banging out, but he's got a lot of good other tracks with a lot of great people. So one of his most popular songs, which you might know, is Days Like This, which is featuring Khalid. And then he's done songs with like Tyler, the creator, Malik Berry, Pusha T. Um, his latest album is called Diaspora, which was released last year. And 
you know what? Normally, I think I said this in my last favourites video, I don't listen to albums necessarily because I'm very selective with the songs that I like. However, in this album, I love every song and that's quite rare. That's how you know that I am a new fan. So because of that, I started listening to his other albums and like, I'm really into him at the moment. Like he recently came to London and I did not get tickets to see him, which was really irritating. The next time, it's definitely on my bucket list. So yeah. So the next favorite is actually an app. I don't know if you guys use this app or not, but it is the Treat Well app. I'm sure you've heard of it. I'm sure you've seen the massive advertisements on the tube if you uh, live or work in London. So Treat Well app is essentially an app that you can use to book treatments. It's pretty self-explanatory, like massages, hair cuts, nails. You can even organize bigger pamper packages like spa days and stuff like that. I really, really love the app because it's just so easy to use. It's really quick, it's really straightforward. So if you wanted to book a, a treatment for sometime this week, you could easily search for what you want. You can put in your location so that Treatwell knows which salons are nearest to you. And then you can see reviews written by people. You can see how many stars it has, what it offers. You can even book a specific stylist if you have a preference. It's really, really easy and it's just changed the whole way that we book things, I think. If you leave reviews, they sometimes give you discounts. So I always get my nails done for £30, but then every time I spend £30 or more, I get £5 off, so I'm actually paying £25. So you can really find treatments for very low prices, like surprisingly low prices and obviously it's a great way to find new places and discover new treatments that you might not have done before so I feel like it's just opened up this new world for me in a way but yeah I just wanted to mention treat well loving that at the moment on the subject of health and beauty I've got two beauty products to mention the first one is the L'Oreal Mega Volume Miss Baby Doll Mascara. I got this for Christmas and I didn't really think much of it at the time because I'd purchased a new mascara before I got this one and I was loving that mascara. However, once I used this one, I was actually so surprised at how good it is. I don't really like ones that aren't big and fat. As you can see, this one is kind of fairly skinny. So I was a bit indifferent before I tried it, but oh my gosh, it honestly does what it says on the tin. Mega volume, it really separates your lashes, makes them look artificial, essentially. Um, it's not that clumpy, unless you add like a thousand layers. I don't really know what else to say about it, to be honest. Like, how much can you say about mascara? I just think it's such a, a great mascara. <laughs> the second item I have to share with you is my the ordinary oil this is the 100 percent organic cold pressed rose hip seed oil Pfft, do you know what i love the ordinary as a brand in general because i feel like it's changed the whole skincare game it's very very affordable that's one of the main selling points no pun intended just very i don't know appealing in the way that it looks like everything is very simple very natural which i think a lot of people are after because you know with your skincare it's very important that you don't bombard it with loads of chemicals and with the ordinary it is literally ordinary everyday solutions they've obviously done their research into what works and what doesn't because this is fantastic rose hip seed oil if you don't know is oil extracted from the seeds of the rose bush plant i think over history it's been known for its positive effects on the skin and on the body it's full of vitamins antioxidants and fatty acids that are really, really good for your skin. I think Miranda Kerr was raving about it on her social media at some point, and since then, everyone's been talking about it, and you can get many different branded products, but this one was only like nine pounds. Some of them are like 20 pounds. I don't see the point of paying 20 pounds when you can get the same thing for nine pounds. Apparently, this stuff is very moisturizing for your skin, which I was attracted to because my skin is hella dry. Um, it also apparently helps with wrinkles, it helps with brightening your skin, it helps to even out your skin tone. That's another thing that um, interested me because my skin can get quite red and... I wouldn't say patchy, but like, 
it's not really as, as smooth as I would like it to be, if that makes any sense. I've been using this every night, just a couple of drops, been rubbing it all over my face. It feels so nice and it smells so nice as well. I used this a while ago, then I ran out and then I didn't repurchase it. Do you mind? I didn't repurchase it for a while because, I don't know, maybe I was broke. Um, and I kind of remembered the other day how much I liked it, so I repurchased it again. And I feel like, I don't know if this is to do with this oil, but recently my skin has been so good. I've actually been wowed by it. Like, I just can't believe how nice it is. Obviously, I still get some spots on my chin, but I think that's just down to hormones, which I can't do anything about. But for the most part, my skin has been looking so good. And I have been, do you mind? I have been taking care of it, I'm not gonna lie. So I think it's just probably a combination of trying to eat healthily, the products that I use, and the fact that my skin is naturally quite good anyway. But I digress, this oil, very, very happy with it. I feel like it is giving me the benefits that it says on the tin. There are a lot of different products that The Ordinary offers, and some of it can be quite intimidating because it's a lot of like, hydrochloric acid with 3% acetone. Just do your research, I would say, and try this if anything. So the last thing I have to talk about is something very random. It's actually a food item. I don't have it on me because I've eaten all of them, as you can imagine. I flipping love the, the stuff. So it is the corn cocktail sausages. <laughs> Guys, I just, these sausages, yeah, are life. They're just so Moorish and they taste quite realistic. So even if you are not a vegetarian or you like me and you want something that still tastes like me, I would say these cocktail sausages do that. They're pretty inexpensive. You can get them from any supermarket. I just really like them. I think they're just great for sharing. If you've got a barbecue, if you've got a picnic, if you want some little appetizers for a party, or just if you want to eat the whole thing by yourself, which is what I do. Perfect. That is all from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you very, very soon. Take care and have a lovely week or weekend, depending on when I put this video up. Okay, bye.